This is the 2016 AP Physics 1 free response question number 3. And this is another ramp question. And in this one, they, they have some bumps here. And they say that when it reaches bump number 41, or 40, I guess, um, it no longer increases in speed between bumps. So it keeps getting faster and faster and faster. And then reaches a point where kind of the average speed no longer increases. So the first question is they want to go, they want you to go ahead and sketch out um, what that would look like. So I'm just going to start here at bump 41. So there is still a, an acceleration between bumps, right? It's still accelerating with a, like an mg sine theta component. Um, and so this is going to come up like this. It's going to accelerate. And then when it hits the bump, it's going to slow it down a little bit. It'll drop back down. Now it should drop down to the same point because it's going to accelerate at the same rate again and reach that same peak and then slow down again and then go up to that same peak. So that's kind of what it should look like, a little spiky here. The point is it kind of, it no longer gets, it kind of reaches that maximum velocity here. And then they next they ask you to draw the average. Well, the average should essentially be right here in the middle. Use a ruler and you draw this across, right? And we could label that V average. Okay, question B is asking, let's say the distance increases between the bumps, okay? Everything else stays the same. Uh, what happens to the maximum speed at this point? Um, well, the kind of the governing equation for us would be kind of our V final equation, V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D. Um, and the key component here is the proportionality between V and D. So V F squared is proportional to our delta D. So in other words, if we increase our delta D, then our final velocity, that would be this point here, should be a little bit greater, which means our average velocity should also be a little bit greater. So this is going to be greater, and then you would essentially explain what I just explained, right? Maybe something like, there's more distance to accelerate. So there will be a greater V final. And again, if this was a test, I'd probably spend a little bit more time explaining this out. I would definitely point to this relationship um, to help with your explanation. All right, question C, what if we're tilted at a greater angle? Right, so if our angle is greater, and go back to FRQ number one to see this, but remember we're going to have our mg sine theta here equals ma. So if we tilt this up at a greater angle, we're going to have a greater acceleration, right? Acceleration is essentially going to be g sine theta here, and so it's going to accelerate at a, a rapid, a more rapid rate. Um, okay, so again, this would be greater than, and again, you can point back to this equation, vf squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad. In this case, we'd say the proportionality is with the acceleration. So if there's more acceleration, since a increases as theta increases, okay, for the same reason that I just explained, there will be uh, a greater final velocity. Okay, and again, I would kind of point in your explanation, you should go into more detail, but point point this out and point this out and there you go, the acceleration is greater so the velocity will also be greater. Okay, next question. Um, so this was interesting. We have our student and the student is going to, um, you know, predict what the the relationship is, and then you're going to do some data, and we want to figure stuff out, right? So the first question is saying, is the data consistent with the equation? So the first thing you should notice is that this looks like it's pretty linear. So that's kind of what I would have done is taken a look at the data, and maybe drawn a best fit line here. Oops, pens off a little bit. Okay, draw a best fit line like this. 
okay? And at first blush, when you look at this, it looks like, okay, as m goes up, they're saying as m goes up, the velocity should go up. And it looks like, you know, oh, it's a nice proportional, v proportional to m. And your data does look like that at some level because it is linear. And I'm sure many, 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 many students probably said that. However, two things to point out. The first thing is this would mean if it was perfectly linear, if we double the mass, velocity would also double. In other words, if we look at one here, this one looks like it's about 1.5 velocity. If we double the mass to two, this should double and be approximately three. So notice it isn't actually that nice, perfectly linear relationship here. Probably the more important thing to notice is the y-intercept. This is saying as the mass goes smaller and smaller, the velocity should get smaller and smaller and approach zero, right? There is no y-intercept, there is no b from the mx plus b equation. So because of that, we're gonna have to say no. And probably, they're probably looking for either of those reasonings that I pointed out. Uh, I would probably go with the y-intercept. The y-intercept should be zero according to the student. To the equation, but isn't. Okay, and again, you can kind of explain a little bit more what I was explaining with verbally, you would kind of explain with words. All right. Well, does equation make physical sense? Um, I would say no as well. And this one's a little bit more obvious. Um, to me, I see kind of two reasons. Uh, the first one would be the D here. And this is kind of the obvious one. As we just previously pointed out, your V should be proportional to D like this, v squared proportional to d. And this is saying basically that as d increases, student says as d increases, the velocity decreases. Okay, which shouldn't be true, which should basically be the opposite. Okay, um, so that would be kind of the main reason. I would, you could probably also have talked about the mass, as you've probably learned many times, um, the acceleration due to gravity is independent of mass, so it doesn't matter what the mass is, it should, ex everything should accelerate at the same rate due to gravity. All right, that concludes question number two.